Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're analyzing a masterpiece of photography taken by a celebrity, Henri Cartier-Bresson, who don't know this famous photographer who is uh, a reference for many, many uh, generations of photographers. Well, Henri Cartier-Bresson documented um, partly uh, the end of the Second World War uh, especially the last days uh, in concentrations, Nazi concentration camps. So the scene uh, you watching on the screen is uh, happening happened uh, in one of these uh, concentration camps, who was evacuated by uh, victorious Allied troops. So Henri Cartier-Bresson was in one of these. Uh, concentration camps um, and he tried to document uh, the events happening just the days after uh, when uh, the, the Nazi regime collapsed. So with his camera he was uh, a witness of, uh, of events uh, gonna be uh, decisive uh, in history, in our modern history. Uh, so we can say like he was on the right place in the right moment in 1945. So what we're watching in the screen, what is describing, what is about? Well, for those who don't know the story of the picture we are watching on the screen, uh, you have to know like uh, in, in, in that concentration camp, uh, there were prisoners who were opposite of, uh, of uh, Nazi, uh, Nazi ideology. So one of the women we seeing in this picture were uh, prisoner uh, on, on that camp, uh, prisoner by uh, her executioner. The other woman we also seeing in, 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 uh, in the screen who was uh, her pain sufferers, let's say. So we can imagine like this woman who were prisoner there uh, had to face humiliation, punishment during months. Punishment mainly ordered and executed by the other woman we seen also in the picture. So suddenly times changed and the prisoner became the free one and the jailer became suddenly the prisoner. So I let you imagine what used to happen on this case. Uh, it's uh, just a matter of revenge and, and the application of the law of retaliation, let's say. Well, that was the historical explanation of what, what reflects this picture. Let's come now to technical analysis for trying to understand from a uh, exclusive uh, photo photographic point of view what's running on on the frame and uh, uh, try to understand why this picture is is working and what can we blame if there is something to blame on this picture so if we divide uh, the frame of this picture on two sides left and right uh, and we focus mainly uh, on uh, three levels of lectures on this picture. Let's say uh, the background first, uh, the middle plan uh, represented by these two uh, women who had a kind of body connection where one of them is clearly in a, a body language defiance, let's say. The third part of the lecture is represented by uh, this guy standing there uh, observing and dominating all the scene of what is happening even he's giving the feeling like he's not inter interacting uh, for the moment so all putting together these three levels of lecture give a kind of harmony kind of equilibrium to this picture uh, uh, based on a geometry expressed in kind of uh, triangle laws and all this equilibrium generated is uh, happening is uh, real because of the angle of the shooting let's say um, and this is very important so uh, if 
technically we want to analyze this picture first of all we should analyze the angle of the shooting so uh, in this case i said like Henri Cartier-Bresson dominated his angle of the shooting choosing the best angle the best side where to be to get the better the best view he can get from this scene uh, and this I advise uh, photographers if you are in a crowded place where you have many people where it's not easy to move by uh, yourself and especially if things are happening very fast you should choose just one place stay there don't move uh, of, of course analyze before the best place where you can sit there or stand there and don't move from there and just wait what is happened otherwise it's many factors moving around you you don't have brain human brain have not no time and no space to manage many factors on the same time so you should sacrifice the angle of the shooting fixing it from the beginning in your head and here we are talking here it came to the experience a photographer can can have uh, it's practicing uh, only practicing we can we can have this intuition intuition of of choosing the best place where where to be uh, and after to be this 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 uh, selection this selection allow you to uh, to after focus on other parameters uh, one another relevant point about this picture is the composition this one it's clear and allows to the person watching this picture to distinguish between different elements and characters are running this picture let's say and as i said before in the background you have people watching this uh, one of these women uh, in a dramatic way uh, on the middle you have these two uh, women's connecting to each other in a in kind of confrontation uh, and you have the man who also is there for giving the equilibrium to this picture dominating the scene by his eyes and listening in a passive way so these three elements allows and gives to this picture a power and make it from it a successful composition so for resume, we told before that Henri Cartier-Bresson uh, was uh, on a decisive moment of the history, there in the right place, in the right moment. Uh, and this is a very important if you want to document uh, uh, the history, if you want like your picture uh, stays in the history, you should have this intuition, uh, this sense of uh, uh, history reading to know exactly what's running in the world and what's happening around you to feel uh, uh, the situations, the history sequences and to be there uh, with your camera when it should be. Uh, this is one. The second, uh, I would say the composition uh, and the angle of shooting were also uh, relevant and very good so uh, that's one of the reasons why also this picture is uh, successful and if I have to add now a critic uh, to this picture uh, I would I would convocate or I would talk about uh, judge now this picture let's say with the perspective Cartier-Bresson created himself uh, we are, I want to talk about the decisive moment the concept of this decisive moment uh, he, 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 he made famous uh, if we try to uh, use this concept to this photography uh, can we say is if this photography really respecting this concept uh, of decisive moment or not well, for me, uh, there is clearly a, a, a problem if we if we attack uh, this picture from this perspective and only from this perspective. I don't want you misunderstand me. So why? Yeah, why for me it's uh, why this picture is not uh, a real decisive moment, uh, and we will make a conclusion with this. Uh, for me, it's 
clearly evident like Cartier-Bresson uh, shooted one second or before or after uh, how 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 can how can I know this or how can we know this? Well, it's easy for the concept of decisive moment is is describing a situation happening in a very fast moment, and when you capture this situation, uh, the key is it should be it should be how to say easy to understand for everybody watching the scene. So if you give this photography to anybody who is not connected to, to, to art or to photography and you ask him the question or her the question, uh, describe for me please what's happening in this picture. Well, uh, I'm quite sure like for many they will, they will not exactly identify what is running uh, in, in this framing. Uh, simply because uh, you should... You, you should well, for those who knows the history who, who, who of the Second World War, those who have, how to say, uh, some visual culture, maybe they can approach the truth uh, hidden behind this photography. But for majority who have not these elements, who you just ask them to describe what's happening, they will go in the wrong way and, and, and not approach uh, the truth. Why? Because... The decisive moment should speak himself for the photography, because uh, the, the the concept of this decisive moment is not uh, how Cartier-Bresson didn't capture uh, the right moment who could be intelligible for everybody. And for argue about that, I will put you the video at the end, because this scene has been documented also by the video. So we have the video uh, explaining and uh, you can see the sequence and understand what's running there uh, and, and understand better like this. One of these women uh, is, uh, is slapping by hand the other one. In the photography, you, can, you cannot see this movement of the hand. So that's why I said he didn't capture this right moment, this decisive moment. If he could capture it uh, one second before, uh, or after maybe the the scene will become a real real masterpiece and that will be my conclusion about uh, the analyze the photo critic of this photo uh, is if you are doing documentary uh, the the you have to respect some codes uh, if you want to have a chance to get really uh, uh, a good picture and between a good picture and a masterpiece there is also some some codes and uh, some elements uh, and the, the decisive moment is one of them capture the right decisive moment this plus the angle of the shooting and a perfect composition and also the 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 element of the history these four keys uh, resuming uh, in this world uh, all put in together make the difference uh, any final difference on your picture and bring your picture to the very very high level to be considered not only a very good picture but a real masterpiece well that's all for today hope you like it uh, hope i could express clearly my ideas and you get the message of what i wanted to explain you on this video uh, as you know english is not my native language so i try to do my best if you enjoyed the content, you can like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, for those photographers who, who want to send me their picture, you are welcome to do it. I will put you also the link. Uh, as you know, I, if you send me one of your best picture and it's retained my attention, capture my attention, I will maybe um, select it and make a video from it to share it with other people. So yeah, do not hesitate to do it. Uh, and see you next time. Deux femmes face à face. L'une porte la main sur l'autre. Qui est la victime Qui est le bourreau Avec cette photo, Henri Cartier-Bresson invite le spectateur à aller plus loin que les apparences. La photo a été prise par le jeune Henri Cartier-Bresson en juin 1945. La scène a lieu en Allemagne, dans ce camp de transit créé par les alliés pour les ex-prisonniers de guerre et les déportés qui rentrent chez eux. Une femme est amenée par un garde, 
devant un jeune homme. C'est le directeur provisoire du camp, un Hollandais de 23 ans, lui-même ancien prisonnier. Cette femme belge est une informatrice de la Gestapo qui s'est cachée au milieu de la foule. Face à elle, l'une des prisonnières a reconnu celle qui l'avait dénoncée. La colère monte. Le coup part. Le photographe déclenche son appareil à la seconde où la violence explose. C'est l'instant décisif qu'Henri Cartier-Bresson traquera toute sa vie. Pour moi, la, la, grande, la grande jouissance, c'est d'être devant un sujet hop, qui s'impose à moi, hop, n'est-ce pas, et puis d'avoir appuyé au bon moment. Une autre photo nous montre la fin de l'histoire. Devant une assistance satisfaite, la même espionne est sonnée. Elle vient d'être tabassée à coups de gourdin par son accusatrice qui ne contient plus sa colère. Avec cette victime qui rend la justice elle-même, Henri Cartier-Bresson nous montre une image crue et réaliste de la libération. 